In the next section of today's lecture, we're going to talk about meta-learning algorithms. Meta-learning is a kind of a logical extension of multitask learning, where instead of simply learning how to solve a variety of tasks, we're going to use many different tasks to learn how to learn new tasks more quickly. So I'll first give a general introduction to meta-learning in a kind of more conventional supervised learning setting, and then I'll discuss how these ideas can be instantiated in RL. So what is meta-learning? If you've learned 100 tasks already, can you figure out how to learn new tasks more effectively? In this case, having multiple tasks becomes a huge advantage because uh, if you can generalize the learning process itself from multiple tasks, then you can drastically accelerate acquisition of a new task. So meta learning essentially amounts to learning to learn. And in practice, it's very closely related to multitask learning. It has many different formulations, although those formulations can be summarized under the same umbrella. So the many different formulations could involve things like learning an optimizer, a learning an RNN that reads in a bunch of experience and then solves a new task, or even just learning a representation in such a way that it could be fine-tuned more quickly to a new task. So these might seem like very, very different things. Now, this is a cartoon from a blog post by Kao Lee that illustrates the learning an optimizer kind of idea. Even though these seem like very different things, they can actually be instantiated in the same framework and many of the different techniques for solving meta learning problems once you kind of drill down into the details actually end up looking a lot like simply different architectural choices for the same basic algorithmic scaffold okay so why is uh, meta learning a good idea deep reinforcement learning especially model free learning requires a huge number of samples so if you can meta learn a faster reinforcement learner then you can learn new tasks efficiently. So what might a meta-learner do differently? Uh, well, a, a meta-learned RL method might explore more intelligently because something about solving those prior tasks tells it how to structure its exploration to acquire a new task quickly. It might avoid trying actions that it knows are useless. So maybe it doesn't know how to solve the new task precisely, but it knows that certain kinds of behaviors are just never good to do. It might also acquire the right features more quickly. So maybe it was trained in such a way that the network can change rapidly uh, to modify its feature representations for the new task. Let me describe a very basic recipe to set up meta-learning for a supervised learning problem. And this recipe will, I think, dem demystify a lot of the uh, question marks that surround meta-learning. This is an image from a, a paper by Robin and La Rochelle from 2017 and illustrate, illustrates how meta-learning for image recognition could work. I realize that image recognition is pretty diff different from RL, but we'll see that very similar principles will actually work in RL as well. So in regular supervised learning, you would have a training set and a test set. In meta-learning, what we're going to have is actually a set of training sets and a set of test sets. Meta-training refers to the set of data sets that we'll use for the meta-learning process. Meta-testing is referring to what we're going to see when we get the new task. So meta-training is basically source domain, meta-testing is target domain. Each of the training sets during meta-training contains some image classes, and the test set contains test images of those classes. So in this example, let's say that we have five classes in every task, but those classes mean different things. So for that first task, class zero is bird, class one is mushroom, class two is dog, class three is person, class four is piano, and then in the test set, there's a dog and a piano. And then in the second task, class zero is uh, gymnast, task, uh, class one is landscape, uh, class two is tank, class three is barrel, etc. These assignments uh, can be either done by hand or they can be randomized and arbitrary. In this case, this is random. And the idea is that you're going to look at those different training sets, and then you're going to use their corresponding test sets to meta train some sort of model that will be able to then take in a new training set for some new class that you've never seen before and then do well on its corresponding test set. So uh, here's how we can look at this. Regular supervised learning takes in some input x and produces a prediction y. So the input x might be, for example, an image and the output y might be a label. Supervised meta learning could be thought of as just a function that takes in an entire training set dtrain, as well as a test image x, and produces the label for that test image y. 
So it's not actually all that different. Some kind of function that will read in that training set and a test image and make a prediction on the test image. Of course, you have to resolve a few questions if you want to instantiate this. For example, how do you read in the training set? There are many options for this. Uh, things like recurrent neural networks or transformers can work pretty well for this. So you could imagine a recurrent neural network that reads in x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, which are the training image label tuples, then reads in the test image x test, and then predicts the test label uh, y test. So you have this little few shot training set, a test input, and a test label. We'll talk more about the specifics of this later. But first, let's talk about what is it that's being learned. So if you're learning to learn, and then you take that and you deploy it on, on your target domain, what is learning? So if meta learning is training this F, what is the learning part? Well, to try to understand this, let's imagine the following schematic picture for generic learning. Generic learning, you have some kind of parameter theta, and you're going to find the theta that minimizes some loss function on the training set. And let's call this process of finding this argmin flearn. So flearn takes in a training set and outputs the argmin of your policy of your model parameters theta. Generic meta learning can be thought of as finding the argmin for the of the loss over your test set for some parameters phi, where these parameters phi are a function of your training set. Okay, so you have some function f theta, which is now a learned function, it's no longer a fixed learning algorithm. f theta takes in a training set and it produces some parameters phi. And those parameters phi are everything you need to know about the training set to do well in the test set. And the way you do meta learning is you train f theta so that the loss on the test sets of the meta training tasks is minimized. So it's kind of a second order thing. You're going to train f theta, which reads in d train, so that the output of f theta works well on d test. So f theta then becomes the learning procedure. So what is f theta for the RNN example? Well, f theta is the part of the RNN that reads in the training set. So you can think of the parameters of f theta, this theta star, as being the parameters of this RNN, and it's going to produce some sort of hidden activation. So once it reads in that training set, it has some hidden activation hi for the task i, and that hidden activation is then given to a little classifier that takes in the hidden activation and a test image x and produces y. So this little bit at the end, that's your uh, classifier, and its parameters phi are simply the combination of h, the hidden activations, and its own parameters, theta p. So it has its own parameters because it's a little neural net, so that's theta p, and it takes in the hidden activations from the RNN encoder, and that's hi. So that, that is what fi, what is phi i for this RNN meta learner. Now there are other kinds of meta learners you could devise, and they will have different notions of phi i, but this is kind of the simplest, that the parameters that you quote unquote learn for a new task are simply the hidden state of this RNN, and the parameters of that top uh, um, layer. So the process of learning a new task basically then amounts to just running the RNN forward and getting the hidden state. So just to recap precisely how this works and how it's trained. You have an RNN, it reads in a sequence of images and their labels. It produces a hidden state. That hidden state goes to a little neural network that takes in a test image and produces its label. The meta-training process trains the parameters of all of these networks. It trains the parameters of the RNN encoder, and it trains the parameters of that little thing at the end. When you go to the target task, which we call meta-test time, you get a training set for the target task. That training set is then encoded using that RNN encoder, which produces a new HI. That new HI is then concatenated with the parameters of the uh, little classifier at the end, which is not adapted to the new task, and that's phi i. And then your prediction depends only on phi i. So in practice, this is a very long way of explaining something very simple, which is that in practice you just run this RNN forward and you get an answer. But this is the explanation of how it relates to meta learning.